and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule is in effect on Triller. I'm Steve Kim, joined by March Madness Lopez. You always make my brackets, I'll tell you that much. Oh, uh, that's about the sweetest thing you've ever said, Korean Kosa. I meant none of it. Shout out to uh, Smoking <laughs> Tim Frazier, Justin Buffalo Knuckles, and Tino. Tino on the edits. We've got so much to talk about. This past weekend from the Armory in Minneapolis, it was showtime. And junior middleweight <laughs> contender Tim Zhu remains undefeated, outscoring and outlasting the game trail, Gaucher, your scores 114-113, 116-111, and 115-112. And also lightweight, Mikel Rivera, 10-round decision over Joseph Ordorno. And junior welterweight, Elvis Rodriguez, back in the swing of things, scores a 7th-round KO of Juan Jose Velasco. Mm. Mario Timzu came out victorious, but last week we said right hands could be his Achilles, and in the round one, bang. Well, much like... Vince Phillips, who threw more of a overhand sneaky right when he fought his father, Costa Zoo. Um, this one was straight down the pike. Mm. But again, I think his his sort of rigid, almost European style um, welcomes that. I like him. He bounced back from it nicely. Yeah. Because that was not a flash knockdown. He caught him. It was hard. It was hard. He was fresh. It was early. And the way he was able to deal with with that adversity um, early on, not panic, compose himself and get back to his game plan, I thought was pretty impressive. But it does make you go, hmm, hmm. for the future with someone who might be a little heavier handed or can close out the show. But those are the kind of things that hopefully you grow and learn from once you are so accustomed to a certain style, the hard habits to break, but it does make it interesting. When you are fighting of that style, and you're just this offensive force. The closer you get, you got to tuck your chin in, got to bury it within mm -hmm. your shoulder, got to get a little bit lower. It's been very noticeable to me, like his <clears> father, <throat> who understood distance a little bit better. If you're going to be so upright and straight, you better gauge distance incredibly well. Right. But Klitschko was great at that. Yes. And I think you have a little more... Uh, forgiving leeway when you're a heavyweight, too, because the punches aren't coming as fast and furious. Right, and Gaucher had just enough athleticism. And look, there was twice in that fight where I thought Gaucher would start to bend his will. To his credit, he got shaken, but he never fell, kept fighting back, and was dangerous. Mm -hmm. In my view, even though Tim Zhu is probably <clears throat> a legitimate top five to seven contender at 154, number one in the DBO to Brian Castaño, mm. in my view, if you really want to develop him, don't you think... Mario, he needs about three more fights of this caliber. Before he faces a Castaño, absolutely. Or a Charlo. Or, correct, anyone at that top tier. I, I think he's on the cusp, but not ready yet, honestly, because he needs to address that, because those are both heavy-handed guys whose style is all wrong for him. Mm, all wrong, really? That I think so. Castaño, I think, crowds you, likes those looping overhand rights. I think that chin's there for the taking. Uh, so Tim Zoo moves to 21 and 0, 15 knockouts. Still a uh, work in progress. Uh, lightweight Mikel Rivera. I'm, I'm just going to say this. Not much to say about this fight. I happen to think he looks more like a young Julian Jackson than Muhammad Ali. Hmm. Also, Elvis Rodriguez. Good to see him back on the grind. I thought from the third round on, he put on his hard hat, went to work, broke down a tough, solid Mexican. It's, solid, it's exactly what we needed to see from him, too, because it was... A lot of pause for concern in the last fight, and I think he's one of those guys that relied a little too much on um, his power, yeah. maybe fell into the hype a little bit. But the fact that he went back to work, it obviously didn't discourage him too much. It's nice to see that he's strong mentally and able to bounce back. Good kid. Yeah, two fights ago last year, me and you were in attendance where it was frozen, his actions against Kenneth Sims. and to Kenneth me, Sims blocks beautifully that night. Yes, he did. He was slick. He was quick. But I, my view, Elvis Rodriguez fell in love with his power. Mm. And boxed, really, I almost think with an arrogance, thinking, as soon as I hit you, fight's over. Sure. Sometimes the other guy does not want to play by that script, and you got to work towards a stoppage. Well, Berlanga, ironically, we talked about last week, I think it, it, very similar uh, cases there. Without a lot of the bling and fanfare and Fat Joe hanging out with yeah. you. But, yeah, I think you get to the point where the knockouts are working for you. You almost you, you get spoiled, yeah. and you don't necessarily work on the rest of your fundamentals. But sometimes you got to chop wood. Chop uh, wood. Anyway, on this same night on ESPN from Resorts World Las Vegas, upset in the making, lightweight Jeremiah Nakatila with the six-round stoppage over Miguel Burchelt. Mario, I'm going to put it like this. You know those days you go real heavy on squats and it's leg day, and you try to walk down the steps and your legs are just wobbling, and you got to hold that railing really tight? That was Burchelt. That was Burchelt, man. Oof. Can I tell you something, though? I was very surprised they would put him in with such a heavy-handed 
dangerous opponent on the heels of his last fight. My guy's got like a 90% knockout ratio. with like 19 knockouts out of 23 fights? 23 victories, two losses, 19 stoppages. Well, yeah. Why is such a heavy-handed guy? That was a weird matchmaking on the heels of what he just came out of and the physical toll it took on him. I don't want to discred- uh, discredit my guy coming from Namibia. Namibia. Right? Viva. Yeah, shout out to him. He, he went out there, fought with a lot of confidence, and let his hands go. But I, I was just, first of all, shocked w- with that. Weren't you, in particular, with such a heavy-handed guy? With that said, I, I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference because Burchell did look. When I saw him take that shot and, and his la- legs went all Bambi on me, I'm like, oh, man. He's just not the same fighter. He's the kind of fighter that you love to f- to watch because he's TV friendly you know you're going to get an exciting fight but those windows are short for those sorts of fighters usually speaking and it seemed like the last fight unfortunately did so much damage he may never be the same again and it sort of broke my heart when i read that he still is, does not want to officially mm. hang him up because i think it's getting or it is now he's in the danger zone where it could be I, it could be really bad. Hey, does he step in there again? Thumbs up to r- referee Russell Mora, who just flat out said, I've seen enough. Yeah. I'm not letting anything tragic happen here. The reason why I think they chose Nakatila is this. If you want to be on ESPN and make the money and not do what Sean Cepeda did and take basically me in an easy tune-up, there's an expectation to face somebody. Now, you're right. The management and his handlers had to agree to this. My view, they saw Nakatila get absolutely stifled by the stealth defense of Shakur Stevenson. And it was a mirage. I go, this guy's no good. I think it showed you just how difficult and how good Stevenson is defensively. Because you're whole, right. That's a horrible comparison well, or to, to a criteria to judge it on. It, it's a miscalculation. There's of course, no doubt. That's not, you don't fight like Stevenson. And here's the <laughs> ish, issue about Burchelt, how quickly it fell apart. And I wrote about this in Canine's Corner for Snack.com today. 13 months ago, coming into that fight with Valdez, people thought... He was the world's most dangerous, fearsome 130 pounder. I, I gotta be. I was part of that. I was part of that uh, chorus. Saying and that. some people thought he may have been on pound for pound list. Here's the reality about Bert Shelton. I suspected this for a while. He was a recipient of very favorable matchmaking. If you actually look at his title run, he wasn't exactly facing Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales and Young Floyd Mayweather. The other thing is he's a bit of a weight bully. And in this era of 24 hour plus weigh ins where you could rehydrate. Over a course of time, that takes its toll. And remember when he weighed in against uh, Valdez, they literally had to give him canned fruit for the fructose right as he got off the scale. Okay. There was a physical erosion that was taking place even when he was winning. Well, I'm going to push back a little because it's easy to be Monday morning quarterback, and now you're, you're <laughs> picking apart his resume and what have you. Yeah, I do believe he ballooned up, and, and um, I, don't, I don't ever like to call anybody a weight bully because if you make the weight, well, then you make the weight. It is what it is, right? I think he's just like that Blues Brothers car. Hall and butt. They got to Just Chicago. racing, and then my guy got to Chicago, and the whole thing, boom. That was it. They were on so a mission it, from God. Exactly. Mm, but mm, God uh, <laughs> no. showed no mercy in this last one. <laughs> so, But you know what I mean? He was exciting while it lasts. He was winning the race while it lasts, but just that that's it. The it, was just, it just collapsed on you. Mario, I really it, think it's that sort of physical toll with that sort of fighter the way his style is and it takes on you that that just one day boom it's over like that mario if you were his brother and if miguel asked you what do you think mario what should i do next what would you tell bert Schultz? bro i love you you've had a hell of a run very impressive we got to hang him up we want you around for the next few years because i it's not even something to joke about i that, that made me actually sad yeah when i heard him because you know that it could be it could be fatal. As the late, great Macafolo once taught me long ago, he said, son, once the legs go, everything else follows. And that's certainly true of Miguel Burchell. Mm-hmm. Also on Saturday from Leeds, uh, Britain, from the U.K. on the zone, Josh Warrington becomes a two-time world champion, stopping Kiko Martinez in two. Word is, it looks like they're going to have a unification bout with Lee Wood. So that should be a big uh-huh. Big promotion out there in that part of the world. News and notes, Mario, it looks like we have some clarity on George Cambosis, the lightweight champion of the this. world. It was reported first by Mike Coppinger and everyone else. It's going to be Devin Haney June 5th. I guess it's a multi-fight deal with rematch clauses, but we're going down under Devin Haney. Go make some history, young man. Melbourne, right? Yes. Not even Sydney, but Melbourne. Yes, I'm very excited about this. Props to Haney for taking this fight and going to the champion's um, homeland. You mentioned weight bully. Uh 
I was talking to our mutual friend, uh, Victor Khan, who works with Haney. My guy walks around 20 pounds heavier than 135, like 155 yeah. easy, sometimes heavier, even that on the regular. I, I don't know if that has to do with his questionable chin because of killing himself, right? But I do think it'll play a factor. I think he kills. I actually think he's doing himself a disservice by cutting down to that weight and going to 140. Yeah. I actually think he'll be a stronger, better fighter for it. I think Cambosis, who doesn't have to kill himself, is going to be young, fresh. He's full of confidence. And I think he looks at the last couple of Haney fights and see that he's been a little chinny. Yeah. And he's going to let those hands fly. He's going to – He's he, he knows that the firepower coming back is not going to be as strong as Tio's. And I like – as talented as Haney is, I like Cambosis in this fight. Do you agree, disagree? If it's pressure, pressure, pressure. And in Australia, if he's a man at work, I oh think yes. Oh, my God. He oh comes from a land God. down under with a Vegemite sandwich. I, I truly believe the timing of this fight favors Cambosis, as does the atmosphere, because you're right. If you had same-day weigh-ins like the olden days, Devin Haney might actually be a welterweight. That's the reality it of it. Is, and yeah. look, we've seen him buzzed against Jorge Linares, who's always been a pretty good puncher, but Joseph jo jo Diaz, jo jo Diaz, who's not a bit, that's what I'm saying. He's a slap hitter, and I was there. He buzzed him late in that fight. And Cambosis can crack harder than Jojo jo Diaz. And he's a much more of a volume Action right. puncher. Those are snappy punches. Yes. Uh, Mario, I, I found this interesting. Andy Ruiz put out on social media, Hey, guys, how about me and Louis Ortiz on pay-per-view? Yeah, and you got mad at my comment. Why would you get mad at my comment? I'm trying to hype the guy up. Wait a minute. I said, let's go. Let's make it happen. From and, and then you and then you get a screenshot and you get mad at me. Yeah, I'm put trying up that screenshot, Tino. Because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, to initiate some uh, action here. I like that fight. You don't like that fight? Here's the thing. Remember Friday's? Great movie with with uh, young uh, Chris Tucker and Ice Cube. There's always Friday, Friday. But go on. All right, and uh, Angela <laughs> means Kaya. Shout out to her and the U. Um, remember Big Worm? Yeah, Big what Perm. What happened to the <laughs> principality? <laughs> Stupid. What happened to the principality of pay per view? <laughs> you were anti pay per view, and now you're like, let's go. I'm not talking about the pay per view aspect. I'm talking about just seeing my guy in the ring again. <laughs> Like, let's go. Let's mix it up. Let's get in there with a live body. That's what I'm talking All about. Right. You put your business hat on. I put my hat on as no, a no, fan. No. But you couldn't put the parentheses, but not on pay-per-view? Now, that I would have respected, God, Big what, Worm. What am I? What am I? I, I? I'm not promoting this fight. I'm just trying to say, don't you want to see him fight again? Anytime heavyweights are in action, it's better for the sport. You know that. Dude, you're just the, you're clean Eastwood. And um, what's that, that I movie know my, where he's I know a grumpy old man in uh, no, Gran Torino? No, you're like the get off my lawn. You've got to achieve oh, that, that status. Yeah, well, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'll just say this. Look, I'll talk to Andy. He will hook you up with some Fashion Nova. But so good stupid. Lord. Uh, Mario, what's going on with Tank Davis and Mayweather promotion? Seems to be trouble in paradise. Well, I was going to ask you, so is the contract up? Is he baiting him? Like, what is going on? This is not the first time. I remember three, four years ago. Floyd's even putting out stuff. Yeah, but hey, I'll always love him. Right. Oh, sure. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Right, like Whitney Houston. Let me ask you this huh? then. Okay, right. let's assume for a second, hypothetically, that they do part ways. What do you think his next move is? Free agency? Do you like his version of, of a Canelo? Of a Canelo go fight by fight or short term contract do you with think, certain networks? Do you think he'd do that as opposed to signing with a I don't think so, and I'll tell Eddie you Hearn. why. Okay, this tell is me. you know that high school couple that's always arguing? That's always fighting, but they always end up at the homecoming dance, the Sadie Hawkins dance. Then they break up two weeks later. Then they're going to the spring festival. Then they're broken up again. Next thing you know, they're holding hands and they're wearing yeah. each other's then, letterman And then jackets. they get married and then they get divorced two years later with three kids. That's them. That's them. <laughs> you, you got it. That, because I remember three, four years ago, he was grousing about Mayweather promotions. Like, I have a promoter that doesn't want me to be great. I was like, What? And I actually wrote an innocent comment. I said, you know, I actually think Mayweather Promotions has done a nice job with Tank in 2018. They got him a title shot. Sure. They took him over to fight Walsh in He's front of a well big crowd. He's yeah. He actually fired back at me. Shut the... I was like, whoa, Tank. Tank? Tank, tank, tank. tank started to roll over you? I felt like I was at Tiananmen Square. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm neutral here. I'm Switzerland camp. Where's your counterpunching? You're good. You're good with... Uh... Hey, I don't want to get in the way of a Tank. You know me. I just want to be Boo. neutral. I just want to see what's best for Tank. But here's the issue. Um, I think he has a point. Do you think he's hearing the critics about you don't care about legacy, you're not fighting anybody? I thought it was interesting he flat out said, they want me to fight this bum. I don't want to do it. That's not exactly a way to market a pay-per-view. <laughs> Last time I checked, Mario. No, listen, I love that he wants to fight real fighters and champions, and he wants to get in there. I, I love that. It's, 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 it's weird because... 
Yes, I agree with you. They have done a good job with him as far as sort of building him as a star, and he's made a lot of money not fighting very dangerous opponents. But at the same time, he's not doing anything for his legacy, right? So... Mar, I got a question, though. If you're getting paid exorbitant, and again, I don't know what Davis is getting, but let's say he's one of the top four or five fighters in the United States in terms of what he grosses per fight. Okay. Does it even matter at that point who you fight? Because like, you fight for money, do you not, as a prize fighter? That's the whole point. So, yeah, I, look, I would write it as long as I could write it. And then, if I'm being honest, because the whole, the whole purpose of the game is to try to get as much money as possible, right? This is, this, what are we in this for? Right. And I think, ultimately, th those belts um, do find their way around because I think even if, time, even if the, the expiration date is a little spoiled, I think it will make its way there. Maybe that's just me being optimistic. But, yeah, in a perfect world, I'd love to see him mix it up right now. You want to see him in there with the uh, Lomachenkos and the Haney's and the— uh, And uh, Tiafimo Lopez. Sure, Cambosis, what have you. Speaking of Tiafimo— did oh you my see God, the? Did you man. see the? Are you with me now? Are you with Wait, me now? Wait, hold on a second. So I'm not. No, I, I didn't see any of the emotional stuff you said. I just read that he's got to have yet another surgery. Well, no, he had that right. We talked about that last week, and then he did a couple of interviews where he said, "Yeah, it was a conspiracy. Uh, the Zone wanted Haney to win the title, so that's why they kind of set me up against Cambosis." Well, it turns out that the Cambosis Haney fights on ESPN. He's having a hard time dealing with wow. this loss. I'm surprised, to be honest. I really Why? am. Why? Because he had the balls to take on Lomachenko when no one else would. That that shows a certain type of character. So I didn't— Doesn't I didn't... it take more character to stay on top and be focused? Absolutely. And I'm not saying—look, it's not like he showed up fat or overweight. Yeah. And there was a lot of circumstances. I'm not making excuses. But with COVID and then the delay, then he got sick. Um— I don't think any of that did him a lot of favors, but allowed him to take a long victory lap, okay? A la Ruiz when he beat that Joshua. That victory lap was longer than the Boston Marathon. Some of which was out of his control, though, because of the timing mm. and the pandemic, and he actually legitimately got sick. You know yeah. that. So, you know, I think there was a lot of factors in there, too. And the irony is, it wasn't like he got demolished. He lost that fight, yeah. but he was still competitive, and he was in it. So it shouldn't have him as down as I thought it would. Do you understand? If no, he got in there and got blasted out, then I think it'd be different. What is troubling to me is you understand that what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do. But it, it seems to me like he's living in a state of denial. Hmm. Like this was this grand conspiracy to right. rob him of his title. When the first thing that you did when you talk about other networks and promoters conspiring against you, Tio, it was you and your team that went to battle with top rank the first thing you did after the Loma fight. That's on you. Mm. Nobody else. And he actually told the ESPN crew on the state of the game. I watched it. He said, oh, that wasn't a loss. That was a lesson. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, anyway, we'll be back with more three knockdown rule on Trill. We come back. We wrap it up with final flurries. And we're back on the three knockdown rule on Triller. Steve Kim, Mario Lopez talking, boxing, and all things beyond. You know, the last punch of the weekend I did not expect to be, or the last strike of the weekend, from Will Smith. Huh. Can, huh. You, can you believe, Kim, there's some people that actually think that was fake. A lot of people think that was fake. Our own Buffalo Knuckles thinks that was fake and staged. Wow. Hmm. So, so I said, okay, so someone up to Chris Rock and said, hey, listen. Here's the deal. For ratings, why don't we let Will Smith come up and smack the shit out of you? You do nothing but stand there and look like a soft mm -hmm. bitch and have no Ooh. funny retort Whoa. and don't come back with any good solid material. And then he cusses you out in front of everyone. Yeah, that sounds good. And he signed off because that's what you're asking me to buy by saying it's fake, right? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, him getting, him slapping Chris Rock was not about Chris Rock. I honestly think it was just misdirected anger, frustration about him now becoming a joke, a meme. A punchline. Sort of the, the poster for emasculation, right? Yeah. Because his wife has put him through the ringer talking about her entanglements, their open relationship. Tupac. Tupac relentlessly. I mean, God, get over that. And Jeez. that's he took that slap for everyone. He took that slap for everyone that he couldn't slap. Yeah, that's honestly my theory. Do you agree? I do. And now, instead of letting it die down, he has launched a million memes and a lot of punchlines. million more memes? Yes. He's already a meme. But in here, can I tell you what was the most bothersome thing? And this is me coming, be working in the world of entertainment. The room, afterwards when he won, stood and applauded. <laughs> 
and just what did you celebrate? What did you expect? Well, you just had that's that was assault, <laughs> right there. I mean, I I forget getting arrested or anything. I mean, the guy should have been at least escorted out or had to talk to or something. Just 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 if he wasn't Will Smith and it was someone else who wasn't as well known, let's assume if it happened, another actor, right? Do you think it would have been handled as no? But Mario, you've been a host of these shows. You're telling me. That there's not a policy that at certain times none of you are to get out of your seat and to step on stage. That's the thing that I thought was kind of interesting, how he just strolled up there, and I'm like, huh? Of course. He did a Kanye. Yes, he did. But but took it but took it next level. And how, how if, you, it, if it was fake, the best acting from both of them yeah, in their entire careers. There, there, zero chance. Zero chance it's fake. Don't you agree? Yeah, and so all the things people say, well, you shouldn't talk about anyone's wife. Well, here's the issue with that relationship. That was not exactly— I didn't even find uh, that joke that offensive. Uh, uh, yeah. By the way, mm. she looks great with her hair mm. short like that. Mm. She's got a pretty beautiful face. Uh, we'll, we'll, so she looks great. So And it was, and so did Demi Moore because they both got beautiful yeah. faces. And it wasn't like it was— I, I didn't think that was— It wasn't like he was talking about the open relationship, which, by the way, ironically, Regina mm. Hall— Made a reference to that earlier. Uh oh. And they were both laughing, and that was fine. Well, no, Will. Did you was, think that joke was that offensive? No, but Will was laughing until he saw his wife. The face. side eye, and once the Jada Pink and side eye came, it's like ah, oh, you got to stand up for her honor. But here's the issue with that marriage: it's not exactly a textbook marriage. It, I mean, if you want to have the sanctimony of marriage upheld, have a better marriage. Have one that's a little bit more traditional. You can't. You I can't mean, be commanding respect because. It, 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 not when your own wife has disrespected you. Open marriage, just in general, yeah. is the worst idea ever. Defeats whole purpose of, of marriage. It's, I'm not trying to be old school. It's just, it yeah. just, you know, it undercuts everything about marriage or your family. Yeah. What What are you standing on? There's no principle. This is the worst moment for Will Smith since he remade Karate Kid. I, that That to me is more offensive than what he did last night. Did you see uh, After Earth? Okay, I refuse to watch that. Uh, Mario, what's going on in Nashville? You're going to be there for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so I'm going to be there for the next few weeks. Great uh, town in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, I'm going to be shooting a holiday movie that's mm. going to be uh, coming up. It's going to have some musical elements to it right oh, there. I see you're practicing. You're a running man, the, the, the tap dancing, yeah, little, cabbage little, patch. No, no running man. A little, little Robo, ballroom, a little dance. Robocop. Dance. Yeah, Renaissance guy. Stanky leg. You're doing all that, man. Looking good. Looking good. You're a fool. You're a fool. Uh, Mario, when uh, you do these things these these uh, little trips is it non-stop filming for just two weeks is that basically the schedule because you're not going to be here for the next weeks. two weeks three, three weeks, weeks. three weeks and it is working saturdays and everything like 12 14 hour days you got to memorize a lot and i don't do anything but work oh by the way i'm still doing access hollywood i think i'm still doing you know a little stuff for the radio show here and there but it's long long days i go i don't turn on the tv for the whole you're time. the mexican hadley's Hadley's. Yeah, remember uh, In Living Color, the Jamaican family? They had all those jobs. Hey, I'm on. Remember them? That was one of my favorite skits. But anyway, all right. But anyway, here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a show, obviously, this week, which all you people are watching. The next show, which we are going to be taping very soon, will feature Doug Fisher of Ring Magazine. Hey. The following week, we're going to take a little swore or a little, uh, what do they call it, a hiatus. Hiatus. And then we're going to be back to re preview and then we'll actually review Spence Uga. So we're only going to miss one show. This is the effort we make. Nice. For the Three Knockdown Rule audience. All right, well, that's it for this week's edition of the Three Knockdown Rule on behalf of Mario Lopez, Tim Frazier, Justin Buffalo Knuckles, and... Tino. Tino on the edits. This is Steve Kim saying goodbye, everybody.